What did your daughter do at school today? What did your daughter do at school today? She may have had her turn to read to class. Turn to read to class, disrupted by more challenging students, intimidated and doesn't want to read to class anymore, despite teachers' efforts. Meticulous and extensive strategies. She might have been, had her learning disrupted by one or more or several children in the classroom with baby bladder that their parents insist that there's no need for them to try and hold, use the muscles to hold and not need to go to the toilet every time the teacher needs to explain the learning to the whole class or take the register perhaps. Your daughter may have used her pester power that you'll be more than familiar with at home. Um, can you resist the nagging? The mithering, it tends to be called in Northern England. Nagging, it tends to have some negative connotations for women of yesteryear for some reason. In my mind. She may have had her learning disrupted by one or a number of people in the class wanting to argue any subject at all or no subject at all with the teacher as they try and do the register and as they try and present what work needs doing at the start of the lesson to the whole class. She may be the persistent arguer. Do you insist that the school mollycoddles your child? You may be insisting that your child and their immediate needs, however inspired they are, come first before another 20 or 30 other children all at once. We'll come back to this, of course. As always, the images here tell one story and the dialogue are connected, but another story. A town that gets described as... described as the centre of the Cotswolds. Um, swing when you're winning. Other and opposite when you're not. Brexit has brought about a real decline and vacation of real prestige properties that would never usually come about. Well, throughout the Cotswolds, really. Not to overstate it, but there's some picture postcard world famous Cotswold towns and villages that have got portfolios of properties in the same town up for sale. These are properties that would usually never come up and be kept in the family because they're just so hard to come by and have an innate value. Often in more boom times, they'd be popular with the design workshops or the footballers wives hobby shop, not necessarily footballers wives, but a rich idle wife that wants a hobby that perhaps costs more than it brings in. And they want a beautiful location where they can attract in even richer, possibly more idle people than themselves and have a lovely time. Lifestyle choice properties, individually and as a whole, are often going to be foreign owners and they're just leaving Britain leaving the countryside in droves and the country, and no one's noticing. A lot of signboards going up in town, a lot of charity shops in the high street. Accessibility to these properties are why people manufacture a slump. A slump isn't teleological from God. People gain from other people's misery and induce it. We can question... Uh, First Testament economics, um, Zionists that are themselves anti-Semitic. We can try and blame Cambridge Analytica, but really, it's everyone that voted Brexit and they didn't have the sense to see that they were being used. 
It's a race to the bottom, I tell you. Molly coddling into the gutter, and that brings Brexit. What did your daughter do at school today? She may have had her to... This is since the introduction of timetable efficiencies, I think. It's slightly, well, since teachers have become more and more qualified, they've become more and more expensive. Certainly in boom times, people could just walk into better paid jobs in private industry. But no, private industry people are scrabbling desperately to get some reliable, dependable income like teaching. Timetable efficiency has meant that well, before mobile phones and instant access internet, schools had to give less lessons to individual teachers. It gave them more headspace, but it also made them available for when other teachers weren't were ill or something, couldn't make it into school. Whether it was their usual subject or not, all the children knew exactly where they stood with all the teachers. And it didn't get as bad as primary one teacher, one sub one form group. But now with mobile phones and internet, supply teachers, cover teachers, they're instantly available. Call them and they'll be there half an hour later. You can shove them into a classroom with no cover work for them to present to the children and expect them to work miracles. Some of them can. And schools just will not support the supply teacher, the same as they do the reg regular teacher, even though close. The children, they've never met this person before. They're supposed to do what they're told. Now it is really the most natural thing in the world not to do what a stranger tells you just because you're in a different environment where the school tells you you must. But at the same time, the highly investigated and qualified supply teacher isn't there to hurt your child. Your child is there to hurt them. One child that needs to be listened to in one class is abusing, basically, the rights, the human rights, of 20 or 30 others. So often meeting that child, it's like, you just know what the parents are going to be like. Often they work at the school. One department may be two staff down, but to ask for the cover work for the children, you're belittling the teacher. I know, I don't, can't get my head around that either. But you work through an agency as a supplier or a cover teacher. And that agency gets feedback from the schools. Any student can create any situation. And it can get reported back to the agency that the teacher has been made to feel that way. Not the student. But your daughter wants to do her own investigations of what the supply cover teacher is like. They don't want to depend on what the school and what the assessment 
organisations have to say. Fourteen can be a difficult age, especially for a girl. What's that, about year nine usually in the UK? This new person in their life might become as important to them as some of their other teachers. They need to experiment and see what they're like. They need to test them and that comes in many different forms. Many of them constitute the child assaulting the teacher. The not all. Some 14-year-old girls are very developed. They feel the need to squeeze past the teacher unnecessarily. They're experimenting on them. Some run round and round the class, like chasing, and they're sort of wanting you to block their way ever so slightly so that they can't cause such disruption and build up to such a crescendo. They have no obligation to stop. You might think, well, if the teacher can't do it to them, they can't do it to the teacher. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. It's nonsense. Makes a useful adage, but nonsense. Judges, like judges in courts, go through a process, essentially a victim-blaming process, according to what complicity there was. Sadly, in America still, there's some Republican judges that ascribe a she-was-begging-for-it mentality to some of their judgments. Your daughter and her friends may well have ganged up on the supply teacher and behaved like a pack of dogs, really, throughout the lesson. Loosely calling it here a lesson. A class full of children can really act together like a pack. It's quite an amazing thing to see, sometimes. Existentially. It can create almost an out-of-body experience when you've got, more usually, half a dozen. It takes that many to form the pack, you see. But sometimes up to 20... <laughs> it's often girls. The 10 to 20 girls, including your daughter possibly, as the ringleader, have been shouting and barking their need, their instructions over the instructions that the supply teacher is trying to read from their regular teacher. They're not wanting to work, they're wanting to descend on the supply teacher as a pack for the whole of the hour. This can be physical crowding, it can be just shouting out one after the other all at the time, getting louder and louder. I don't want to use the word frenzy really, but on rare occasions your daughter can work her way into a frenzy of this pack activity, much the same as a football crowd can act like animals. Now, you can't describe your daughters as a pack of dogs, but wolves might be more acceptable to the senior leadership team that you're trying to describe the problem to. While wolves does tend to describe ripping and tearing, and it's not really, it's more when the wolves crown drowned, you know, like in The Revenant, I think it is. No, there's a couple of films with it. The wolves crowd round and they're growling. They're stronger as a pack than the human. It's only a matter of time until he is their prey. Or oh, she, in the, well, there's a he in the film, you see. That's just one lesson. But of course, if it's happened in one lesson, it gets spread as, great laugh, we were doing this. And it can be three lessons in a day that you account. And there's another two that might be almost as bad. There are, of course, some of the pack, and it's not always an exclusively female pack, don't get me wrong, that start to pity the prey a little bit, and they do recognise what's happening and their part in what's happening. And the group does get a little bit smaller over days and weeks. Now, the she-wolf of the female dog pack, uh, yeah, obviously isn't always, but maybe part of the senior leadership's team family. There may be a husband and a wife at the school. And that doesn't mean that the children are automatically going to be horrendous. Far from it. But they're likely to have a distinctive, very passive-aggressive, strong whip-snap to their tail, even if they're model pupils. Now, you think this pack of dogs is a metaphor, um, perhaps an analogy, a simile. It's far from an isolated instant when it's not. Completely out of the blue, you will get a girl, when the teacher walks up to them, 
asking them to be on task. They don't want to stop doing some taking selfies of themselves and their friends. She doesn't want to be asked again to try and get on task, please. <coughs> this is the girl barking at the teacher. Now, once one starts, the crazy behaviour starts to become the norm. And so, while it can be an isolated incident, there's certainly instances of more than one, more than three, 14-year-old girls barking at one teacher, asking students to be on task and do the work that the school and their regular teacher has said, can result in the student perhaps thinking that, I don't know what they're thinking quite honestly, thinking that the teacher is expecting them to perform like seals, I don't know, expecting them to jump to it after being asked for half a dozen or a dozen times, create some instant history of having gone through getting to know the person, and they're not just a stranger in front of you barking orders to get on task, even closer to whimpering pieces to get on task. Your daughter today was on her knees on the classroom, walking round on all fours, barking, and the teacher's stepping away from the crazy behaviour, obviously. She's barking at another student that's supposed to be outside, but they're doing a circuit, and in, do a circuit, out again. She's trying to bark at the service of the teacher, I think, trying to get the student to be outside where they've been put outside to wait for the senior leadership team to come and collect them. Member, not team. Only takes one. Because the senior leadership have a threat. They threaten. They have a useful mechanism that they can employ without questioning. Now you might think that your daughter is a little bit embarrassed about this behaviour, but it marks her out. When the senior leadership arrive for the other child that's waiting for them, that it's taken 10 minutes to get on an email and have them called when the senior, senior leadership person arrives. Um, supply teacher says, um, do you have to explain why you think um, certain students should be removed? Do you remember when we were, when you were, what were you doing? Uh, running round and round. How many times did you, about three? Um, I felt uncomfortable about it, but I did um, put my arm out or try and cover the gangway so you would slow down. You made the right choice and stopped, but then you changed your mind and pushed on through the teacher. I mean, I wasn't offering any resistance, so I didn't get pushed over. And how many times did you run around the class? About half a dozen. I think... That's probably more like it. And could you, are you feeling okay about, you could, you could perhaps share with the SLT call out, what was our interaction like earlier in the lesson towards the start? <coughs> the student has no shame at all in recreating the barking. This is your daughter. Can you believe it's your daughter? It is your daughter. This is what your daughter is like. The classroom, it's a safe environment. Apart from those, the, the parents aren't going to complain. The senior leadership's husband and wife's uh, problem child, shall we call them, is intimidating and bullying and restricting the learning of the most needy in the classroom, whose parents aren't going to complain. This isn't a metropolitan place by any stretch of the imagination. It's a countryside area and everyone knows everyone. And they know their social status. Two senior leadership in a family money house. They've got money. This is interesting to some of the girls that don't come from money. They can befriend someone, they can identify someone, they might have the same unusual coloured hair, or spend a lot of time in the reflection room. Have a shared sense of play. Now, you would think that this um, same unusual coloured hair boy and girl 
um, seem inseparable in their sense of play. Um, it can be necessary, there isn't always two doors to put them outside, you can put them either side of the door, some schools you can't even put them outside. You want to be moving them around the room, um, you don't know who they do, you have some sense, but it is really only a sense who they get on with, who they don't get on with, who you can put them next to, who it really is a mistake. You have a seating plan, it's obviously printed out, so there's no chance of reading it or recognising the photos, because then the department would have to hold the detentions. But for the girl to have access, potentially in the future, to something more than friendship and access to the family money, or just be invited along to nicer occasions, she's going to show off to this same unusual coloured hair child. But most of all, she wants to experiment on the teacher, the adult in the classroom. See what she does and how they react or don't react at or it's boring teaching. Your daughter today on the power pole that goes from floor to ceiling that carries the electricity for the um, sockets. Pole dancing for quite an extended period in the middle of the lesson. I think it was geography, was it geography? Did look a little bit like a science lesson. But for five minutes, and intermittently for 30 seconds at a time, teachers are trying best to just have pretend they haven't noticed. Pole dancing. It's one girl's pole dancing lessons to the others. I mean, I dread to think what sort of eyeful the kicking the leg up in the wisp of a skirt was given to the poor people that were giving her any attention. Sometimes it's just best to give people no attention. Now on some other ruse, she gets put out the door. I know, it sounds like putting your dog out for a wee, doesn't it, at night? Where in the corridor, she's bending over and then turning around, flat of her back against the wall and um, rhythmic uh, movements of her arms above her head and her legs out and wide caressing the back wall. Just stay there and calm down for a bit and get bored and I'll come and speak to you in a minute. Your nice, privileged, small town school, your daughter is either barking like a dog or pole dancing to impress the new fresh meat in school. Who would be impressed with such amateur dramatics? goes from floor to ceiling that carries the electricity for the um, sockets. Pole dancing for quite an extended period in the middle of the lesson. I think it was geography. Was it geography? It did look a little bit like a science lesson. But for five minutes and intermittently for 30 seconds at a time, teachers are trying best to just have pretend they haven't noticed pole dancing. It's one girl's pole dancing lessons to the others. I mean, I dread to think what sort of eyeful the kicking the leg up in the wisp of a skirt was given to the poor people that were giving her any attention. Sometimes it's just best to give people no attention. Now on some other ruse, she gets put out the door. I know, it sounds like putting your dog out for a wee, doesn't it, at night? Where in the corridor, she's bending over and then turning around, flat of her back against the wall and then rhythmic uh, movements of her arms above her head and her legs out and wide caressing the back wall. Just stay there and calm down for a bit and get bored and I'll come and speak to you in a minute. Your nice, privileged, small town school, your daughter is either barking like a dog or to impress the 
new fresh meat in school. Who would be impressed with such amateur dramatics?